Hello and welcome. This is Atul Vadkar, your instructor. In the last session, we have discussed about images. We have understood there are three types of images: color image, gray level image, and black and white image. We have also understood that how the image is represented in terms of computer, or how computer will see a particular image. Now we have understood that image is nothing but the matrix in terms of computer programming. and if it is a color image then it is three dimensional array or the matrix having red green and blue plane and also height and width so this time we are going to understand the complete architecture of cnn algorithm or convolutional neural networks and we will study each and every layer or every single block in cnn algorithm we'll also study how this algorithm can be used uh to classify the images or to recognize images such as uh, lung cancer detection or brain tumor detection or even you can classify the emotion and faces or even fruit classification can be done using cnn algorithm so uh, uh we'll start with the architecture of cnn so this is how the cnn algorithms architecture will look like so if you clearly see here there are two major stages now the number one stage is feature extraction or feature learning and the another layer is classification stage of this algorithm so basically when i talk about the cnn or convolutional neural network it has got two stages now stage number one is feature extraction and the second stage is classification so firstly we'll extract some features from the image and after that we are going to classify that image or we are going to recognize that image for example if you have to recognize the faces so instead of uh, storing the faces in the database or matching one face image with another face what we are going to do we are going to extract some features from that image once we have features now we'll match feature with another features or feature database and after that we can classify that particular image so coming back to the feature learning there are three different layers or uh, stages are important number one is convolution layer so here you can see here and the second one is relu and the third one is pooling now again we have repeated convolution relu and pooling so you can repeat uh, for number of times as well uh, but the uh, on the larger scale there are only three different stages the convolution layer then relu layer and pooling layer and as far as the classification stage is concerned the flattening layer or flatten layer is there and finally there is fully connected uh, neural network and after that there is soft max layer is there so these three layers at the feature extraction and these three layers at the classification uh, combines together becomes this uh, convolutional neural network so what happens this image the real time image which will pass through all these layers and at the end we'll get the correct outcome or the classification whether now as this particular case here it is the car and uh, now it's it will go through convolution relu then pooling again convolution relu and pooling after that from flattening layer then fully connected neural network and softmax and at the end it will tell us whether this image is car or truck or any other vehicle so this is how the complete flow is going to happen and this is uh, uh, on the larger scale uh, this this is how the cnn architecture will look like now we'll understand each and everything in detail what is convolution what is relu what is pool, pooling layer uh, how the flattening layer is going to work or how the fully connected neural network is going to work and how the softmax function is going to uh, extract the meaningful information or going to give the classification for the particular image now let us understand the very first layer which is convolution layer now convolution is the mathematical function and it is used to extract features from the input image now whenever i talk about the uh, image recognition or image classification we do not compare two different images in 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 actual recognition problem or in actual ca classification problem we do not compare the two images or we do not match image with image what we do we store the features of that image and based on that features we take judgment 
okay for example if you have seen number of images of dogs and in future if you find a dog on the street which you have never seen before you can recognize that particular animal as a dog why because you have features of the dog in your mind so you don't have the picture of dog in your uh, mind or the particular dog which you have just seen on the street this is for the first time you are watching that dog but still you can remember or you can uh, classify that this particular animal is a dog because you have stored features of dog in your uh, mind now what can be the features of dog maybe the dog is barking that is the feature now the size of dog can be the feature or even the color of the dog or eyes or ears or nose uh, this can be the feature so there can be n number of size shape color such kind of features can be there for uh, to recognize some object or classify some image so here I am talking about convolution features not the color and other things but convolution preserves the relationship between pixels by learning image features using small square of input data so basically it's a mathematical operation which is happening between two different uh, metrics or uh, on two different uh, values and after that it's going to extract or it will, it will give some uh, features so after convolution uh, whatever we'll get that will be the features from the input image for example there is an input image having dimension h w and d so this is height width and this is the third dimension or the plane of this image as it is rgb image or color image it will be a three dimensional image now i am going to take convolution of this image with the filter matrix now the filter matrix is a small matrix and having dimensions f h f w and d so this is uh, filter width and filter height and the dimension of this and after having the convolution I'll get a different matrix, new matrix. Now this new matrix will be called as features of input image. Now for example, this is the image of car. Now we are doing convolution with some filter matrix and now we are getting a different matrix. Now this different matrix is nothing but features of this car image. So this is how we'll extract the feature. Now coming back to the convolution, now basically convolution is multiplication in frequency domain so if I uh, convert this image to frequency domain and if I, again I convert this uh, filter matrix to frequency domain now simply taking the multiplication of that frequency domain components I'll get the convolution in terms of time domain the convolution operation is quite complicated or complex but in terms of frequency domain convolution is nothing but simple multiplication it's a mathematical operator after having the convolution with the filter matrix will get and new matrix and now this new matrix now will be called as the feature vector or feature matrix and its dimensions will be h uh, minus this fh plus 1 and w minus fw plus 1 this will be the dimensions of this new matrix and now the convolution operator is used to extract the features from input image so this larger is the input image maybe the image of dog cat or any other uh, maybe the face of particular person and that is convolved with this convolution matrix or the filter matrix and after that or sometimes this is also called as kernel matrix or the kernel filter and after having this operation we'll get this thing which is the new matrix and now this is the features of input image now when I uh, discuss the dog uh, example or dog or cat for example you have to identify dog and cat so you can recognize uh, which animal is dog and which is cat now you remember some feature now features could be size shape color of that animal now there as a human being we are talking about these features but in terms of uh, convolutional neural networks we are talking about this convolved feature as a features of input image so whenever you have the con uh, this uh, input image will have a convolution with the filter matrix and after that we'll get the convolved features or the convolutional features now this is called as features of input image now how the convolution actually works now that's the very important thing so consider this is an image matrix now for simplicity I am considering only two dimensional matrix image matrix 
uh, rather considering the three dimensional matrix. So for simplicity, I am having the five by five image matrix, having these values zero, one, and this is one, one, and so on. And I am taking the convolution, not the simple multiplication. It's the convolution with the filter matrix. Now the filter matrix is a small matrix having three by three, or maybe any any number of uh, rows and columns can be there. And uh, we'll discuss this what uh, about this filter matrix in the next slide. But uh, right now, just understand this is image matrix and this is filter matrix. Now, how to have a convolution of these two things? Now, this is original image. Now, this can be the image of face, or it can be a dog image, cat image that we have to identify. So, the filter matrix is firstly placed at this location. Now, you can see here. So, initially it is placed here and then the multiplication is calculated and that value is taken forward and then it is shifted towards the right so this is how now at this particular point you can see here that uh, uh, the multiplication is happening and uh, the addition of all the values is taken forward and now this will become the next uh, matrix and this is called as convolved feature matrix so this is how the uh, the filter matrix we are going to place over the image matrix and we are going to take a multiplication and the addition of all the terms and that will be carried forward as a feature value or convolved feature and finally we'll get this uh, pink colored matrix now this is called as features of input image so we'll have this image and we'll calculate features of this image like this this is very small matrix and based on these features we are going to take judgment or we are going to classify our image whether it's dog or cat and we are going to learn or we are going to train our neural network based on these features now coming back to the filter matrix or kernel matrix so we we know that this uh, image could be anything it can be uh, the face or it can be a dog cat or any other even the uh, even the uh, different emotion faces or something like that or even different fruit image but what about this kernel matrix what is this matrix now here it is there are some uh, fixed kernel matrix are available here so this is identity matrix having this is the combination age detection filter matrix this there there are these kind of this thing and once it is operated on some image the result or the feature will look like this in this case the feature is going to look like this 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 thing so there are different edge detection filter metrics the sharpen matrix will make this image like this the blur will make like this and even the Gaussian blur is going to uh, make your image like this so this is how the convolution is going to work with some filter matrix. now the filter matrix is the constant matrix or is the fixed matrix or the kernel matrix which is going to operate on the image and it's going to uh, actually extract some features from the image so this matrix will have the convolution with this matrix and will get some features now coming back to the next stage of the convolution after convolution so we have this image that will be convolved with some filter matrix or the kernel matrix will get the convolution features immediately after that there is ReLU so let's try to understand what is this ReLU so this ReLU stands for rectified linear unit for long linear operations and its output is f of x is equal to maximum of 0 and x now consider this is your feature matrix now we have obtained this matrix after taking convolution of image matrix with the filter matrix so here whatever we have done this thing after this convolution we'll get this convolved feature now we are going to operate a relu on this particular pink color matrix so here here we go so if you have some negative terms like minus 10 minus 110 and so on after having this uh, relu transfer function we are going to convert these negative terms to zero so basically this is the equation that this is following f of x that means this output is equals to maximum between 0 and x now this individual value will treated as x now the maximum value between this 0 and x will be assigned over here now in case of 15 15 and 0 15 is maximum so it is here so 20 20 and 0 if I compare 20 with 0 20 is maximum now if I compare minus 10 with 0 
Now zero is maximum, that's why zero is carried forward. So minus 10 is converted to zero. So in a simple language, just understand the ReLU means converting negative terms from the uh, uh, convolved feature to zero. So all negative terms from this convolution feature or the feature of image will be converted to zero. So this is how the uh, ReLU is going to operate on the image. So all negative terms, this minus 10, minus 110, minus 15 will be converted to zero uh, by using this ReLU operation or it will follow this equation f of x is equal to maximum 0 and this x so whichever is the maximum will be assigned next so this is how after relu layer you will get feature like this okay now the next important layer is pooling layer okay now if if you if you look at this particular block diagram the first one is convolution layer then second one is relu layer and the third stage of this convolutional neural network is pooling. Now let's understand how the pooling is going to work. So we have understood that firstly we have an image then we'll take a convolution with filter matrix then we'll take a ReLU so ReLU is going to make uh, negative terms to zero and after that pooling. Now the pooling is something related to the compression of the feature matrix. Now this is the feature matrix after having the uh, ReLU operation. So this is how, for example, let's take a simple example. I have this feature matrix after the ReLU operation. Now this will go through this pooling layer. Now there are three different types of pooling, max pooling, average pooling and sum pooling. So basically uh, it's, it's going to compress the size of the feature and it's going to reduce the number of parameters when the images are too large. So generally whenever the images are too large and they are generating large feature matrix so in order to process that thing it needs a lots of time or for the training algorithm it will take a lots of time to train your model or train your neural network so in order to reduce that thing we can reduce some feature parameters. So how the reduction is done? So firstly the max pooling will understand the max pooling. So what it does if the max pooling with uh, 2 by 2 filter or the if the size is 2 by 2 then let's say this is the pink portion max pooling we are doing here the maximum value in this pink region is carried forward so the maximum value is 6 in this particular area so it is here now in this particular greenish area so maximum value is 8 so it is here now in this particular case uh, the maximum value is 3 so it is carried forward and in this region the maximum value is 4 so this value is here. Now this was 4 by 4 feature matrix so having 16 number of parameters or 16 number of values. Now it is converted to 2 by 2 only so 4. So 12 number of values are reduced so this is how the compression can be applied and after compression now we are done with the feature extraction stage. Now this is how we can extract some feature. Now this final stage or whatever we are getting here. Now this is the final feature of input image. Now this feature can be used to train your neural network or fully connected neural network. Now coming back to the uh, architecture. So we have this input uh, image then convolution we have understood then ReLU we have understood again we have pooling. And this is one more stage of convolution plus ReLU plus pooling. Or even you can have one more convolution ReLU plus pooling. So you can add number of convolution ReLU plus pooling depending upon the architecture of your CNN model. But if you add more layers then definitely the training time will be more as the processing is going to increase. And but the important thing is that it's going to increase the accuracy of your uh, neural network on train model. So uh, you have to just uh, uh, take care about these things, how many layers you want and uh, uh, what will be the dimension of this uh, filter matrix or the image matrix. So depending upon that you can achieve some accuracy. So generally this CNN has uh, more than 90% accuracy. So after the pooling we have this uh, feature and the flattening layer is the important before this uh, after this pooling layer you have this flatten layer now what this flatten layer uh, will do 
Now let's come back to this thing once again. Now this is the matrix or the feature matrix which is two dimensional matrix as we have seen. But for fully connected uh, neural network we need an array or one dimensional uh, array. So the flattening layer will convert this feature matrix to one dimensional array or a vector and after that fully connected neural network is going to operate on it. So we have this uh, matrix two dimensional feature that will be converted to one dimensional single dimensional uh, no, array or vector using flattening layer or flatten layer so we got this x1 x2 x3 and x4 now this x1 is 6 x2 is 8 and so on now this corresponds to the feature vector of input image for example you have to classify the animals dog cat and let's say any other animal there are three different animals and you have the uh, firstly you have shown or you have processed the image of dog now there will be a convolution then relu and then pooling after pooling there will be flattening layer and this flattening layer will give x1 x2 x3 x4 some values now this is the fully connected neural network so what you whatever you are seeing here is the fully connected neural network so every node or neuron is connected to every other nodes in the next layer and this is how the fully connect full connection or the fully connected neural network can form and this is the output stage or output layer this is input layer this LO dot represents input layer and this is the output layer now how many nodes will be there in output layer it depends on the number of categories for example if I have to classify only dog and cat so there are only two categories so there will be y1 and y2 only outputs and this is all about uh, the feature matrix or feature array or vector now once I apply here these things these values now this will pass through this uh, neural network or fully connected neural network and here I'll get some output now output whatever I'll get here it will be in terms of zeros and ones so for example if y1 is equals to 1 I'll say the image is dog if y2 is equal to 1 then I'll say this is cat and if the y3 is equals to 1 then I'll say this is horse or any other animal okay or maybe horse I'm going to classify that so what uh, the training means what what how the training is done so initially you will have the data set let's say dog cat and horse you have three different animals so you will have lots of images of dog lots of images of cat and lots of images of dog uh, sorry horse let's say thousand images of cat thousand images of horse and thousand images of dog now out of these thousand images 70 percent images let's say 700 images will be used for training and 30 percent images let's say 300 images will be used for testing or what we can say the the validation now what is training and testing so initially what is training so initially let's say we are giving a dog image as input and then it will go through convolution relu pooling and after flattening we'll get this thing so here after giving that image or that vector here y1 which corresponds to dog should be equal to 1 it should it should produce 1 as output if it is producing one output that means the internal mathematics of these layers is correct if it is not giving one as output that means uh, we need to adjust the weights of these nodes some values so we adjust internal values uh, so that we'll get here one now secondly I'll show the dog image one more time and again I'll check whether y1 is maximum or not and this I'll keep on happening or keep on repeating for even I'll give the cat image this time y2 should be maximum and if it is not then I'll adjust these uh, weights and bias so there are weights and bias associated with all the nodes and basically it's a complex mathematics and mathematical equations that uh, that we have to modify or adjust if it is uh, for cat if it, uh, the y is maximum that means the internal mathematics is correct if it is not then we have to make changes in the mathematics we have to adjust some values inside this and this this process is nothing but the training process so initially 
we train our model or we train our network that this is the dog image this is the cat image and this is the image of horse so by training the internal mathematics or the nodes and the values of nodes uh, will be updated and they will be uh, uh, set to a proper value so that whenever you will show the cat image the y2 will be maximum whenever you will give it a dog image the y1 will be maximum and whenever you will give the horse image the y3 will be maximum so we'll train our network in that way we'll adjust the values of internal mathematics or nodes in that particular way and this is how your network will get train now once it is trained you can find out the training accuracy and training loss so how much accurately it is uh, making judgment on the training data set and now the 30 percent images which you have reserved for testing or validation what will you will give that images also which this uh, has never seen and again it will check the accuracy of this thing so will give 70 percent images which the network has already seen will calculate its accuracy and loss after that will show some images which this network has never seen before which is that 30 percent images which is that testing images so we'll again check the accuracy of this network if it gives a better accuracy even for the testing data or the test images or that 30 percent images that means your network is properly trained now it can recognize any other image which this network has never seen before if you give uh, let's say any random image from the google which is the image of cat definitely you will get y2 maximum depending upon the accuracy of your network if your accuracy of your network is 90 percent that means there are 90 percent chances that whenever you will give cat image the y2 will be maximum when you will give dog image y1 will be maximum and when you will give horse image y3 will be maximum so this is how we'll train our network now this network is capable of recognizing any image which is randomly given to it so there are basically two different approaches which uh, we follow uh, for this uh, training the one is transfer learning and an another one is learning from scratch so whatever we have discussed is the learning from scratch for example you have to identify the vehicles then whether it's a car truck or bicycle so initially you go do like this then there is convolution then there is relu pooling and then uh, you you just calculate some values and then there are y1 y2 so this 95 percent and three percent and so on these are values of y1 y2 y3 and so on so if y1 is 95 percent or it is 0 0.95 that means it is very much close to one and it is maximum so this image is of car like this so this is how you can actually uh, train your model so this is called as learning from the scratch so you take a data set and you train all the layers and extract some features and after that we uh, can classify that thing but most of the time the uh, transfer learning is also suitable now this particular technique is used only when uh, you are doing the similar kind of task in case of learning from scratch it needs a large amount of time to process and to get this network trained mostly we need a gpu graphical processing units cpu on cpu your system will run very slow it will take a large amount of time to train your network and even some hours or even uh, days can be required to train your network but on gpu can uh, uh, significantly reduce your time but still if you have to reduce uh, more time then you can go with transfer learning for example a network which is already trained to recognize the animals cat dog or any other thing can be used some layers or some training can be used or most of the part of that network can be used to classify the vehicles so now these two problems are similar now first problem is classification of the animals and the second problem statement is classification of vehicles so technically these two things are similar in terms of process flow but obviously the there is difference in terms of the application or the images which are uh, classifying but uh, technically the they are doing the same job so that network or that parameters of that network can be used 
to classify the vehicles even with the network which is already trained for classification of animals can be used to classify some vehicles so here what happens so we use some pre-trained uh, models and then we do some fine tuning of your network for our new data set and now this will be uh, possible to recognize some images for example this particular network is already trained to recognize car truck bicycle and so on number of uh, vehicles let's say 10 number of vehicles and I want to recognize only two different vehicles so what I'll take I'll take uh, this particular network some most of the layers from this particular network some most of the parameters from this particular network now I'll transfer the learning of this network to here and I'll just fine-tune this network for new data set and just for these two categories now this is called a transfer learning so now this is very much uh, uh, suitable in terms of whenever you can have this possibility now this will significantly reduce your processing time and it will uh, uh, train your network more fastly and now you can recognize your objects like this so in order to summarize all your activities from our previous uh, diagrams and from other uh, uh, things so initially for example you have this image then we have this convolution plus ReLU then we get this feature matrix then after pooling we can compress the size of this feature we can reduce the dimensions of so that the processing will be faster and then again you can have the convolution plus ReLU and so on again you can have convolution plus ReLU then you get these feature vectors or feature matrix then inside the fully connected neural network we adjust the weights values or that internal mathematics to fit our job and now we have these uh, output layers like boat, house, tree and cat. Now this particular image uh, is, is, is the image of tree for example. So here we'll get some values. For this Y1 we are getting 0 0.04. For house you are getting 0 0.05. For tree you are getting 0 0.9. And for cat you are getting 0 0.0.1. So in this case this uh, tree, this particular is getting maximum. So that means this is the image of tree. And if you uh, give here cat image then this cat uh, output will be maximum if you give boat as an input image then the uh, outcome of this boat will be maximum this time it is 0 0.04 but in that case it will be maximum this is how the entire convolutional neural network works and it can classify the images now here what we can do you can classify the vehicles you can recognize the faces you can classify the emotion you can classify the fruits even you can detect the brain tumor so in case of brain tumor detection you'll have two data sets or uh, data set having two different categories so one will be a normal CT scan images another will be a, a CT scan images with the brain tumor and uh, you'll train your network so whenever you'll give any random CT scan it will identify uh, whether it has the brain tumor or not so uh, this is how the convolution neural network is used to classify the images or to recognize the images so i hope you have understood the basic core concepts of convolutional and neural networks and how to use and also you have understood how the image is represented in the computer and how the cnn architecture looks like and how it works so thanks for watching